Hi. How are you today? We now come to what I think is the most exciting part of business strategy today, which is how the internet is absolutely transforming all businesses. In order to understand that, there's two core concepts that we need. The first is the value system, and the second is the value chain. Let me start with the value system. This diagram shows a typical value system for a typical firm. The firm is shown in grey and it has various suppliers, it has various distribution channels and it has its customers. The greatest example of a value chain or value system I should say is shown by the Ford Model T in 1908 and how it was constructed. In a classic article, Abernethy and Wayne show that Ford was an absolutely colossal success because of the extensiveness of its value system. It had everything from even from its own coal mines and railroad to its own dealers and distributors. And the effect of this was absolutely fantastic. If we look at the year uh, 1925, we can see that Ford made a profit of $219 million. This is an amazing amount of money. I've tried to convert it into the sort of dollars that that we'd represent today. And I reckon it's about $219 billion, which again is an unthinkable amount of money. And Ford was indeed impregnable, or so it appeared, for all these reasons. And the one conclusion that one could draw from Ford at that time, and indeed other companies, was that overall superiority in the value system was absolutely key to strategic superiority, that is being hugely profitable. And we get confirmation of that whenever we look at the strategy compass and apply it to Ford. Competitive position, fantastic. Asset utilisation, fantastic. Leadership, it certainly had vision. Uh, I'm not sure the people were connected at all. And in terms of the markets addressed, this was a new burgeoning market and Ford was in the vanguard of addressing that market. Let's now go forward to 1931 and see what changes have occurred. First change I would like to bring to your attention is that Ford lost $97 million dollars an unthinkable amount of money yet again. And there were various things that caused that, including his loss of market share. But the key driver of this awful loss was the huge increase in the fixed assets per dollar of sales. When we apply the strategy compass to it, we can see that it lost to General Motors in terms of its competitive position. It lost to General Motors in terms of its asset utilisation. It lost its leadership in that it did not have the vision to see what way the market was changing. And it lost its markets addressed again to General Motors and those firms that copied General Motors. Ford lost. Let's see what Alfred Sloan, who was the architect of General Motors strategy, later wrote. And he said that Mr. Ford had frozen his policy in the Model T. And if we go down to the middle, his precious volume, which was the foundation of his fault, his position was fast disappearing. He could not continue losing sales and maintain his profits. It was disastrous for Ford. Let's move on to the value chain. Here's the simplest value chain that I can think of. It's one for a ticket tout. And we have the ticket tout incurs two costs. The cost he has to pay for the ticket and the time he has to spend hanging around a stadium hoping that someone will buy it. If the price he gets is greater than those two costs, he will make the margin shown in that diagram. This is a generic value chain as set out by Michael Porter. And in it, we can see there are two sets of activities. Along the bottom, primary activities and along the top, support activities. The primary activities are those activities in which the firm must engage to get the product from raw material to market. We have inbound logistics, getting it into the company. Operations, what they do with it. Outbound logistics, shipping it out. 
marketing and sales, that is promoting it, and service, that is providing after sales service. These are all costs and there are other sets of costs called the support activities, the firm infrastructure, the human resource management, technology management, the process of procurement. That's another set of costs that are called support activities. When the costs of support activities and the costs of primary activities are added, they ought to be less than the prices or revenues obtained and the difference there is the margin. Value chains have different shapes depending upon the industry. For example, here's one for a manufacturing firm where the bulk of costs are in terms of operations. And if we go to a professional service firm, much higher uh, cost in terms of human resource management, much lower in terms of operations, much higher in terms of marketing and sales. Firms are continuing, continuously striving to improve their value chains. That means cutting their costs. And they tend traditionally do it, to do it by two means. One is cost reductions, and the other is new sources of differentiation. Today, it is possible to deconstruct value chains and often form a totally new business. This is being caused by the internet, and the internet is wrecking these traditional rules of business. It's wrecking the value system. It's also wrecking the value chain. How it is doing that, we will examine in chapter 23. It just remains for me to acknowledge that most of the credits are due to Apple. And finally, to thank you for listening to this podcast, to hope that you enjoyed it and to hope that you will listen to some more in the future. Thank you very much and goodbye.